Access Control API Part 1 Introduction Welcome to this tutorial series on utilizing the Access Control API. Through this REST-based API, Access Management System, AMS, can securely and reliably communicate with custom apps and software. In this video, you will learn about the prerequisites and initial configuration for using the Access API. But first, we will define more about the API architecture. The Access Control API consists of two independent interfaces. These interfaces are REST API and gRPC. First, REST is a standard interface and uses HTTP methods like GET, POST, PUT and DELETE to interact with resources. REST can be used to handle the Access Control master data, execute commands, or view a history of events. The other interface, gRPC, is a remote procedure call framework. This is an open source data exchange technology that uses the HTTP 2 protocol. In contrast to the request and response of REST, gRPC comes in the format of a subscription that will constantly receive updates as long as there is a connection. gRPC is best used to provide a stream of live events and state changes. Prerequisites As a prerequisite for using the Access Control API, you need to have an AMS instance installed and configured. For detailed instruction on this, see the AMS 5.0 How to Videos playlist. Prerequisite number two is to license your system. The Access API is included in all base licenses. The Access API is always available, a separate installation is not required. However, the Access API needs to be enabled with the following configuration steps. Preparation First we need to create a user that will interact with the API backend. That user must be created as an employee. And then the employee becomes a real user with a password. We call the user simply REST. The new created user needs unlimited access to the API backend. To enable the API website we need to create a JSON configuration file. The content of the file can be copied from the Access Control API PDF found in the add-ons advanced folder of the install package. In Chapter 2.2 we find a sample of the JSON file. Let's copy that to the clipboard. Then we need a text editor, for example Notepad++ to modify it to our needs. Notepad++ needs to be started with administrative credentials because otherwise we cannot save to protected folders. The client ID line needs to contain the authorized user that we just created in AMS. The client name could be anything. The access token lifetime is the length of the session in seconds. 1800 is only 30 minutes. In this instance we decide to make it 4 hours. You can eventually extend that value to whatever number of seconds you find convenient. Now we return to the PDF to find the correct file name to save. We save it in the folder program files, x86, slash Bosch Seacher Heitzesteem slash Access Management Systems slash Identity Server.
We need to restart the identity server so that AMS can pick up the configuration details from the JSON file. Therefore we start the ACE process control tool with administrative credentials. Find the identity server in the process names list. Select it and click restart. After restarting, the identity server has picked up the JSON configuration and the REST user can authorize. Swagger UI The available functionality of the Access API can be seen on Swagger. This is a web tool that can be used to visualize and interact with the Access API's resources without having any of the implementation logic in place. In Chapter 3 of the PDF we will find the URL to access Swagger. We paste the URL in the browser's address bar. But we still need to find the hostname. The hostname must be the AMS server name. That can be found by executing a command prompt on the AMS server. Type hostname. Copy the hostname and paste it into the URL. Now the URL is complete and you can add it to your favorites folder. Here we can authorize with the previously created user for the time we configured in the JSON file, 4 hours. After we log in we see the result, authorized. The preparations are finished and we can now use the Access Control API. In the next video you will see how to work with master data using REST API with Swagger.